Hey everybody, I'm doing another photo editing tutorial on my Photoshop here on YouTube. And right now I'm using Adobe Photoshop CS3 Extended. Um, I'm going to be using a picture that I took yesterday from uh, my one of my contest entries that I did. So this is me, of course. And um, I've already resized the picture to get it to a better size for either posting online or anything else I wanted to do with it. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be softening kind of the pixeled edge, kind of the, the grainy look in the skin and the face and whatnot. I'm also going to be making the colors pop a bit more. So first we're going to start with the fact it needs to be sharpened a little bit. So I'm going to come up here to filter and I want to sharpen it. So I'm going to come down to sharpen and sharpen it. It kind of makes things stand out a bit more, but it does give the skin kind of a grainier texture. So over here on your sidebar, right under your paint, you've got Blur, Sharpen, and Smudge. And most programs really do have a blur tool. I know uh, Paint Shop Pro also has one. And um, it works pretty well in there as well. So you want to select the, the uh, blur tool. And your brackets right under your backspace will help change the size of your tool without having to jump all over the place. Now up here you have, I have it set to be a kind of a kind of a, a blurry look instead of the sharper looks here. I want to bring the strength down to maybe about 40% here. And uh, so we're going to be using about 40% strength. If you use 100% strength it's really going to be too much. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. bring the supplies down. Now when you blur on your face and whatnot or other faces to uh, cause the graininess to go away, you want to avoid any defining characteristics like the nostrils and the nose, the lips, ears, eyelashes, hair, the chin, anything that could help give away the effect of what you've done. So we're just going to soften the look and not make it completely fake. So you want to soften and just blur around in the edges where you don't want that graininess to sit. This also works really well for fine lines in the face and the occasional wrinkle depending on how bad it is. I'm avoiding the strong lines here in the nose so that it doesn't completely lose its definition. I'm avoiding the chin as well so we don't completely lose that definition as well. The line in the neck here, this tendon here, you want to go ahead and avoid blurring that out, but the uh, shoulder bones here should be okay. Or you want to avoid hair. Clothing lines you want to leave pretty well intact so you don't lose those definitions and kind of make the picture look fake. And when you get into tight spots, just be sure to, to resize your tool there so you don't end up blurring over those spots that we were trying to avoid. In the creases of your eyes here, you also want to avoid hitting those because that'll help, that'll force you to lose a lot of definition. But a lot of people may or may not notice, but it's still a big deal. You want to leave those in there. Now the ears can be pretty tricky, so you want to make sure to keep your tool pretty small so you don't go over any important lines or anything. And the ears can be pretty time consuming. Since you're trying to avoid losing any of those lines, they go fairly slowly in here. But if you don't blur out the ear if you don't blend out the ear and soften the look but you do the rest of the face it's going to make your whole picture look a little strange now we want to make the colors pop so we're going to come up here to image adjustments and we're going to start with the saturation hue and saturation now hue changes the color of the picture entirely and that can be pretty cool in some situations, but that's not what I'm going for today. So we're just going to go ahead and leave that at zero. Lightness, of course, 
changes the lightness of the picture, but once again, that's not the look we're going for today, so we're going to leave that at zero. The saturation, however, is a pretty cool tool. So if you're going for a picture with this, like a dampened color, you can bring it down about part, part way. You still have some colors popping out while giving it more of a gray tone. We want a little bit more color in this one, though. You don't want to go too much because then you end up with something like that. Again, that's not what we're looking for. So, I'm going to put it at 35. That's a pretty good one. Well, maybe a little too much. I'm going to get down to 30. And then I'm going to come over here to Adjustments, Brightness, and Contrast. I want to make it a little bit brighter. Not a whole lot. I want to add to the contrast. The contrast, as you can see, also makes a big difference. I want a little bit of contrast here to help make things pop out a bit. Down to 30. Not even that strong. There we go. There we go. Before and after. Making the colors pop, you're making the different, all kinds of things, the background, the light and whatnot, all that pop. And that's kind of what I was going for with this one. I wanted to help define things and make things stand out better and really make it a more vibrant picture. And so that's what we were able to do today. Um, if there's anything else that anybody would like to see, any simple techniques, even some of the complex techniques on Photoshop, uh, just let me know. And I will be more than happy to do some tutorials on here, particularly now that I've found a better program to do so with. And I hope I'll see you all around.